Hey everybody, it, in 2006, roughly, I suffered a slap tear. I was uh, being a clown on the dance floor, did a backflip, landed awkwardly, and my shoulder made a bit of a pop. Uh, the following day, I couldn't move my arm, and I went down the path of having to figure out, first of all, what was wrong with my shoulder, and then how to fix it, how to rehab it. And this actually uh, spanned about a six-year journey because I, it introduced me to some amazing uh, sort of surgeons, some some amazing physiotherapists, physical therapists for those in the US, uh, and also really opened my mind to what can be achieved both through exercise alone, exercise uh, uh, strength training and mobility, and also um, obviously going down the road of surgery, which sometimes must occur. Now, today we're going to take a deep dive into what a slap tear is in the shoulder and uh, the best course of action if you have just been given this diagnosis. Of course, I'm going to be joined with my, uh, by my good friend, Phil White from Phil Wright Physio. Uh, to chew on this really, really important and insightful topic. Welcome to the Unity Gym podcast brought to you by VPA Australia, our trusted supplement source since day one. As VPA sponsored athletes, we're excited to offer you a special 10% discount on their premium supplements available worldwide. Just use our discount code listed in the episode description. Today's episode is also sponsored by the Slap Tear Rehab Blueprint. If you're overwhelmed by rehab tips on social media, our blueprint provides clear results-based methods to help you return to your favorite activities faster and stronger than surgery can get you there. Best of all, it's free. Grab it through the link in our description. If you'd like a personalized slap tear rehab program tailored to your needs and goals and support every step of the way via online one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out my slap tear rehab program. To get started, click the link in the description, create an account, complete a short pre-exercise questionnaire, and I'll welcome you on the inside. And remember, as Amazon affiliates, you can get all the equipment used in our videos and podcasts at competitive prices through our affiliate links in the description. Now let's dive into today's episode. Welcome, Phil. Great to have you back. How are you? It's highlight of the week. Yeah. Highlight of the week. Highlight of the week. And this is a good topic. We have had so many people joining us uh, because of a slap tear diagnosis. And, you know, you check our Google reviews. There's five star reviews pouring in of people having transformational experiences within the first 28 days. And it's really interesting because, you know, as we'll probably discuss in a later episode, we don't do anything magic. You know, uh, we follow a pretty uh, strict uh philosophy uh methodology here of training for structural balance but there is something very very important that's key to your recovery that comes first which is proper diagnosis and that's what i've brought phil on today to discuss because we really want to make sure that uh, people aren't just using our videos and content to die to self-diagnose because because there are going to be instances where you may need to go down the route of surgery. I didn't, and I was able to rehab uh, my shoulder through exercise and good physical therapy guidance. Same with Rad. Uh, and uh, he's ha actually, I had a slap tear in my left shoulder uh, where the whole anterior uh, cartilage labrum was torn off as a result. And, you know, I never had it uh, reattached and I'm functioning pretty well, you know, from time to time I have, it's problematic, but very rarely in, in the grand scheme of things. So why don't we, first of all, start by explaining what exactly slap s l a p uh, tear means yeah uh, great place to start because it's definitely something that yeah you need to get right when you're figuring this out and it's so tempting just to um jump to conclusions and, and self-diagnose on the internet but it's there's a reason why there's professions around this like you really want to be clear on what you're working with and that doesn't necessarily mean because like the treatment is going to be wildly different in many cases like one of the great things i think about how you approach it in the ums is like a generalized structural approach to specific injuries instead of going kind of down the injury rabbit hole that can leave you um you know away from regular training for long periods of time so it's it's not that every specific injury needs to have like wildly different um rehab all the time but there's, there's some really key things that you just don't want to miss and as Yanni mentioned before, like there are definitely people who can uh, manage really well without surgery, but there are also people who, um, yeah, certainly should go see a surgeon if they do have partic particular types of labral tears. And that's kind of the start is that people, I think the biggest mistake people make is kind of hearing labral tear and then assuming it's a slap tear because 
while the labrum, which is the cartilage disc in the shoulder, um, yeah, w- when that gets injured, I guess like the most common and the most like popular one, I guess, is that um, is the slap tear. But there's actually like multiple different types of tears you can have. So don't jump to the conclusion just because you've seen a scan that you have a labral tear that it automatically is a slap tear. So do you know that? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Now <laughs> yeah. that that's um, brings me to my next question. Like, what? Let's say hypothetically, you've just been diagnosed. You've just been you've just hurt your shoulder you're, you're experiencing quite severe pain you've probably lost some mobility there uh what should someone do uh what's the first step um yeah i mean uh, chucking in my disclaimer there like always go and, and work with a professional on this and and get a, a thorough diagnosis um so going in and seeing someone making sure that they're um getting a full history on, on exactly how the injury happened um getting a bit of history of of what happened before the injury and like your history of training because it's one of the things that can come up with label tears is that uh people have a sore shoulder have an incident get a scan and then they find out they have a label tear or a slap tear and it's interesting I was, I was like working with a patient um just recently who had a slap tear as part of a larger diagnosis of, of many different things on the scan and it but when you actually looked at the wording it really did suggest that the like the labral tear component of it was actually like more of a slow degenerative thing that had happened like long before and that probably wasn't actually the generator of the pain and it didn't necessarily come from like the recent abusive load or the recent acute injury so i think that's a really key thing to realize as well is just because you have a um, slap tear there or a or a label tear doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be the thing that is causing the issue just because you have structural change again doesn't mean that there's pain and if this is your first time listening to us then um yeah do go back and have a look at some of the pain science episodes we've done because go into great detail about how um structure doesn't necessarily structural change doesn't necessarily equal uh, a pain experience so so just quickly what you're saying uh suggests that someone could have a slap tear and not even know about it oh yeah 100 percent. yeah happens okay. all the wow. time same with like knee osteoarthritis hip osteoarthritis, like so many things, like you can have a like structural change that then you just have no idea about. And that can that's kind of one of the reasons why there's a big pushback against um, just getting imaging for absolutely everything all the time. Like you really do want to, when working with a professional, like them to go through certain criteria that then means that you get imaging, not starting with imaging and working where they back way backwards because people sort of think like, oh, I should just start with the scan and then we'll know what's exactly what's going on. But Often if you do that without the kind of appropriate questioning around it, then it's sort of simple just to like jump to conclusions about what's causing the pain and, and lack, of, lack of function when really a thorough subjective assessment will give you pretty much all that information and then the scan works as a confirmatory diagnosis. And the problem with like people might say like, oh, you know, it's better to know rather than not, but it's just so common. I've seen it over and over again. I've experienced it myself as someone who used to be, you know, just really limited in what they did because I had so many injuries and whatever. Like that injury identity, which I've talked about on so many different episodes, like it just becomes this thing once you know it's like something's there, you just can't help but your brain just like put the magnifying glass on it and it, it, really it feels worse. focus. Every- it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's there's truly like pain science, neuroscience reasons why this is the case. Um, and with pain being your body's, your brain's expression of perceived threat, like if you're aware of this thing in you that's damaged then um yeah you're going to be feeling more threatened by it so i i think a really good um uh way of explaining that is when you see a child run on the road and they trip and fall and scrape their knee usually they're fine they'll get up and they'll be like okay and they sort of look at you for confirmation and if they see any blood coming you know like if it's a if it's a graze that's bad enough that it bleeds the moment they see the blood that's the point when they completely fall apart you know prior to that and if there's no blood they'll usually just dust it off and keep playing you know and it can be you know there's no real difference in severity of the injury so it's it's really interesting to see how the mind plays uh, yeah, a bit of a trick on you you know and particularly in shoulders like when it is someone who is uh has a history of being really athletic um is very involved in exercise and training and i've just seen this come through quite a few times with um i mean this was happened my own experience your experience and um certainly if a lot of my recent uh patients that come through some of the, the ums uh, videos on slap tears and it just is like when that is such a big part of your identity being able to train and when you have a sore shoulder like it just becomes such a big focus and I, the analogy that I, I think i used a couple of episodes ago was about the idea that like a paper cut for a concert violinist who's about to do a solo um on the main stage at a big concert it's going to be recorded and played forever like that paper cut is going to be so much of a bigger threat to them than a paper cut of someone who you know like a 
builder on site and they just went to check their notes and um you know they hurt their finger while they were like focused on something entirely different so if you get a paper cut while you're running away from a, a lion like it's just the level of focus that you have on the the thing really does dictate how much of a um experience you have of pain because it's like again just so wrapped up in your identity so i know that like the, the structure like yeah it's, it's important to understand structurally what's going on but it's uh, there's a really good reason not to just go for like imaging first work with someone who can go through a thorough assessment figure it figure out if there's a, a reason to get imaging and then if there is a reason to get imaging then understanding that like just because something's there doesn't necessarily mean it's the cause of the issue um and that it might and mean th a that actually probably poses a good argument to furnish the notion that you should see a a, a good sports physical therapist or, or phys physiotherapist as opposed to a general practitioner who may just sort of go okay you've got yeah, pain yeah. and we need to go and get that scanned and figure out what it is you know yeah and, and again like gps like my partner's a gp and yeah she, the amount of stuff that she has to know is just insane like the the coverage of you know all of anything that basically can go wrong with you like a gp needs to needs to be on, on top of and so you can understand that like unless there's someone who is really specialized in area or they've had personal experience with it then it's you know they're not necessarily going to have that same level of diagnostic skill both from like a subjective history and they don't also just don't have time especially in australia like um the, the yeah. sessions are so, so quick yep. so there's a really good reason to go see someone who is particularly trained in in this so physios or um you know sport doctors are great but they're often just so prohibitively expensive um and yeah, starting with that and making sure that they, and, and again, when trying to find the person who's right for you to work with, like do work with someone who either works with someone, like has plenty of experience working with people with the type of injury that you're interested in, has had it themselves or is involved with like a sport where that's a common sort of thing. So, um, or they do what you like to do. So if they, if you want to be getting back in the gym, find a trainer who, a, a physio who works in the gym or, or likes to train themselves or whatever sport you're doing. So. I that's think that's tip. such a, it's such an yeah. important comment and, and, and point to make is to, you know, find someone with skin in the game who shares yeah. the same or similar, I guess, uh, training, uh, habit, uh, routines, you know, yeah. uh, practices, practices, the word I'm looking for, exactly. you know, um, so, but yeah, the on. big takeaway there is like, yeah, if you have just remember that like all slap tears are labral tears but not all labral tears are slap tears. So I think that's the, <laughs> um, from our basic introduction of like, what is a slap tear? I think that's a really important thing to understand is that there's very specific things there. Cause um, yeah, the slap tear is the, um, yeah, is a, it's a, a subsection of them and they have a particular type of management. Whereas if you had something like a bank art lesion, which is also a um, shoulder labral tear, then that's going to have pretty different management and you, you know, you're more likely to want to go and Did have Did you like explain a, exactly what it means? What the mechanism of a slap tear is? Yeah, so uh, the, the slap tear means basically superior labrum. So that's the top of the labrum. And if you think about what labrum is, it's a it's a disc that sits in the shoulder to add a bit more of a um, surface for the ball to stay attached into the socket of the joint because the shoulder is an amazing joint where it is inherently unstable to allow incredible ranges of motion and to be able to produce great force overhead um, through great range of motion. But you have these passive structures, so the, the um, cartilage, labrum that sits and provides an extra bit of um surface for the head of the humerus to attach into and basically to kind of project like produce that passive stability to keep it in the middle of the joint and so what can happen is basically that that cartilage disc at the top so the superior labrum um can get an anterior to posterior tear so that basically means from the front to the back at the top it um comes up at, yeah it, you get a tear in there and the thing about that is where the superior labrum is where one of the heads of your bicep attaches so it can often be then resulting in, in issues around um yeah pain around your bicep and front of the shoulder um some dysfunction there so that's the thing when um looking at management that can be one of the big sort of decision makers whether you go down the surgical route or if you go non-surgical is is i guess what level of um function you still have in your bicep and whether you have um you know you and what kind of need you have to get back to <laughs> using your bicep so if you're like if your biceps are everything to you and your profession or your um sport or your goals or whatever then it might make more sense to get a surgery there as opposed to someone who really wasn't that fast and was functioning at a perfectly fine level without it so those are the kind of considerations that generally they'll make um when yeah deciding on surgery or no surgery Awesome. So is that kind of general overview of uh, what's going on with the, like what it yeah, is? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think that yeah. we, you know, we've defined that you can uh, experience a slap tear from both an acute or an overuse 
uh, scenario mechanism, meaning that you may actually start to slowly and progressively feel discomfort in the shoulder and uh, potentially less mobility over time. And then uh, when you go and get diagnosed, it may be that you've actually suffered the injury quite some time ago or it's progressively come about. And then we also made note of the fact that, you know, commonly you will experience an acute level injury where something is it's an abusive load that happens in one scenario or one instance and you experience a level of discomfort and pain and then you go and need to get diagnosed but both yeah, so for, for both of us like we, we both had the acute version of it so i had it when i had a um someone barge into me playing sport and i sort of subluxed my shoulder so my shoulder got uh, pulled down very aggressively and um yeah that's how i had mine and yeah you had yours in the acute way but again it like progressive chronic label um uh, degeneration can happen from again overuse well overuse is a, a term that i'm not i don't love it, it, but like a degenerative process yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well just a, right. like basically like a long-term dysfunctional shoulder with poor load management and poor um, recovery and nutrition <laughs> would be, yeah 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 absolutely that's a concise way of saying that and then I think the the next two key points that we should probably we, we can probably uh, conclude on this discussion is that uh Although it's super important to get diagnosed and we, we really want to encourage people to do that properly and properly means not just going to a, a, a just anyone, uh, going to a physical therapist who has some skin in the game, who understands the types of training that you have been doing that have led to the injury and uh, also that at the point where you are going to go get a scan done, it's 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 also important, although we're really, really uh, a proponent and, and advocating to go and get this done properly, to not fix yourself to the conclusion of that scan. Like if you have, if it comes, it becomes evident that you do have a slap tear, it's not the be all and end all. It doesn't mean that you need to be put in the naughty corner and uh, abstain from general exercise. Quite the contrary, you know, and we're going to talk about this in future episodes, but it's super duper important to, you know, go and get the, the proper diagnosis from the right person. And if that means that they want to not, you won't, they won't, they may not always send you off for scans. They may be able to do a really thorough analysis and then uh, say, well, look, we, we can get you back to, you know, 98% of your um, uh, movement uh, without needing to sort of, diagnose any further through uh exercise you know but if they do say yes we want to go and get um uh, a bit more confidence around what is exactly is going on here and they send you to get an mri then you know don't freak out if the diagnosis comes back that the, the conclusive of a slap tear what, what would you add to that phil yeah i mean i think you know we're we're all evidence of the fact that you know you can't get slap tears and obviously there are different degrees so um you know there's going to be minor tears compared to um you know ex- you know, more extreme ones, uh, more intense ones. So yeah, like there are going to be degrees. So again, don't think just because you have one that, that it means it's like a totally dysfunctional shoulder. Like we've we've all been, um, you know, both you, me, Rad, like we've all had them and been able to like train in an unlimited sort of way where, um, yeah, it's really not kind of then <laughs> change decisions made around like what we do exercise wise. So it is one of those things that, you know, it's um, like important to understand and it is like serious. But it's also important to realize that, like, just because something is like a serious injury doesn't mean it's going to be something that will, like, yeah, limit you in in the future. So, getting first, like, starting with understanding, and then working with someone who can then progressively take you from uh, where you are to then like filling in all the gaps of like, if your goal is to get back to high level sport, then it's not just like here's three dinky exercises to do for three weeks and then forget about it. Like, here's where you want to get to now. What are all of the milestones? What are all of the steps? What are all the movements we need? What are all the, um, you know, uh, contraction, like what what are all the factors that we need to get you back to, and then can give you a pathway that goes from, uh, where you are, which is probably a bit freaked out. And part of getting back into, um, upper body training when you've had a slap tear is just like the confidence of it. (laughs) So like, how can they build out your confidence and get you back to, um, doing like, all of the steps that you need to be kind of returned to sport or whatever activity you are. And unfortunately in most physio practices, that doesn't really happen. Um, and a lot around the world, cause I think like a lot of the time it's cause people sort of, you know, like they get worried that the patients aren't going to 
like come back and see the, the plan through so often and and some a lot of like personal uh, physios and uh, physical therapists in the u.s like don't have that sort of sports science or like training background as well and they they're just doing what they know so uh yeah again it is really important to understand that just because you get like a couple of little um exercises to start out with doesn't mean that that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life and that um yeah if you want to take it from there to like return to full activity then working with people who can take you every step of the way is it's okay so but yeah, yeah don't absolutely. just stop with those little three like rehab exercises and think that's that's it Absolutely. And we're going to go deep into what to do beyond the diagnosis in our next episode. So make sure you tune in for that. And I just want to take a quick side note to really um, uh, compliment anyone who's gotten this far, you know, of all the podcasts, of all the news feeds, of all the videos, of all the radio, everything that you could be spending your time uh, watching or listening to right now, you've chosen to be here with us. And that is uh, to make a conscious effort to improve your health. And I think that that should be commended. So well done. And thank you for uh, joining us and making it this far. Thank you, Phil. And yeah, really uh, appreciate it. And just to like, because I, you know, I always want to put this in when people like talking to people who are maybe in the, like, if you got this far, it's probably because you are like a bit freaked out about this diagnosis. There was again, like look at every injury as an opportunity and find like, what are the other things that I can be working on? So again, with that magnifying glass of so, like extreme focus on your shoulder, like if you can find progress in other areas of your body, so lower body strength, mobility, um, fitness, running, something like if you can find something else to focus on, it makes going through the motions for your upper body so much more important. So again, I've said that so many times, but I just want to make sure that if, you know, if you're, this is the first time you've ever watched us that, uh, uh, that's just such a key part of um, yeah, being mentally well during the rehab experience. <laughs> awesome. F great way to finish off. That's it, folks. Uh, Phil, where can we find you? It's uh, philwhite.physio. No, uh, so Phil White Physio on social media and then philwhite.me, M-E, uh, for my website if you want to get in contact. But yeah, Beautiful. Instagram, like Phil White Physio is a great place to start. Fantastic. And unitygym.com, of course, for uh, Rad, myself, and the Unify Movement System. We'll see you next time, folks. Thank you very much. Ciao.